How does dynamic range impact your network analyzer measurements? Let's dig into that and then we'll draw today's wave winners. When you're looking at network analyzers, dynamic range is always one of the most prominently featured specifications. But what actually is dynamic range and what does it do for you? The textbook definition of dynamic range is the difference between the network analyzer receiver's maximum input power and the minimum measurable power. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Hi, I'm Matt, and we'll first illustrate dynamic range conceptually, then we'll see how that ties back to the network analyzer. If I take a photo of this oscilloscope under a very bright light, some parts of it are still obscured in the shadows, we can think of this as them being lost in the noise. But if I combine multiple exposures, such as taking a photo where the light is very bright, I can capture the shadows in there, when I combine the shadows from the overexposed photo and the highlights from the underexposed photo, I capture the full dynamic range of the scene. This is a way to increase the dynamic range of my image. Let's apply this concept to a real network analyzer trace. Here, we're looking at the S21 trace of a bandpass filter. S21 means we're measuring at port 2 what's coming from port 1. So this trace shows us which frequencies get through the filter. You'll notice in the stop band, where the test signal does not pass through the filter, the trace is noisy. This part of the trace is called the noise floor. You can think of it as the dark part of the photos I took earlier. It's the power level at which the network analyzer cannot distinguish the test signal from the noise. The noise floor is the lower bound of the dynamic range of this measurement. In the pass band, indicated by marker 1, our power level is minus 1.26 dB. So the dynamic range of this measurement is the difference between the maximum power and the noise floor, which comes out to 104.36 dB. So when you're looking at network analyzer specifications, dynamic range tells you the power range over which you can accurately measure. Just like improving dynamic range on a camera, there's a few ways you can improve dynamic range on a network analyzer by reducing the noise floor. Number one, you can increase the power of your signal. This will boost your signal away from the noise this is a great method because you don't lose any measurement speed, but you have to be careful to stay within the power limits of your equipment. If you can't increase the signal power, the next best thing to do is to reduce the IF bandwidth. This will make your network analyzer process smaller chunks of the measurement, so you'll get a more accurate result, but the measurement will take longer. Finally, you can use averaging to reduce noise. There's two types of averaging, point and sweep. Point averaging grabs each point a specified number of times and then moves to the next point. Sweep averaging takes a specified number of sweeps and averages the traces. Both give you the average of multiple measurements, which reduces the effects of random noise. The trade-off of averaging is that it takes longer since you're taking more measurements. So that's what dynamic range is and three ways you can improve it on your network analyzer measurements. Thanks for watching, and to learn more about network analyzer measurements, check the app note linked in the description. And there are a bunch of great VNA resources over in the Wave Library, so go hit up the link in the description and check those out. Matt actually wrote a bunch of those, so if you liked this tip, you're in for a treat. And now it's time to draw today's winners. Remember, you can enter once per day at wavekeysight.com between now and March 13th, and every entry is included in every drawing. We're also going to be live streaming again on Monday the 9th and Friday the 13th. No bad juju there. Um, today's winners, the winners of the DSLX1204A are Ken Plumbly, Philip Pickett, Bartosz Dabrowski, Thomas Van Gemmert, and Stefan Walter. Congratulations. The winners of the U1282A, that's a four and a half digit DMM, are Himanshu Guatama, Thomas Roth, Mitchell McClure, Jameson Mattis, and Reed Nguyen. Congratulations. And the winner of our tier two prize, who gets their pick from a bunch of different pieces of gear. We already know one person chose the scope. I'm curious to see what everyone else ends up choosing. Anyways, the tier two winner is Joshua Uriarte. Congratulations to all of you. You'll be getting an email from us shortly. Tomorrow we'll be back with a brand new tip, six ESD tips in under 60 seconds. And in Monday's live stream, I also promised to bring in a couple of our RF video tips. So we will bring in Ali's video tutorial on total harmonic distortion. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon so you get notified when a new video goes up, especially during Wave. And you can also hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. I'm Daniel Bogdanov and I'll see you tomorrow. 
And now it's time for a song. Die, dynamic range where measurements can be displayed. Connect up to your ports to find opens or shorts or check antennas and impedance of power planes. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>